Yes, Benny has a very interesting history as a character. I created him as a cameo. Uh, in my first uh, translated novel, Dead Before Dying, I had a protagonist, uh, Mathieu Baer, um, who was suffering from depression and it was a fairly dark book. And I knew I needed something to balance that darkness and I created a character called Benny Chrysel, uh, who was supposed to be a bit of comic relief, a much lighter character. And of course, when you create cameo characters, characters that are supposed to be just on a few pages in a book, um, then you don't spend as much time thinking about it. Uh, so I created a, a bit of a cliche, the, the cop who is an alcoholic, uh, but somehow stumbles to success, and that was Benny Chrysel. Um, when I, when I started writing and working with, with Benny, uh, he just became such a fantastic character to work with. Every time he walked onto the page, something happened, he became exciting, he was very funny. Um, and I, I really got a liking uh, for him. The problem was that by the end of the book, Benny Chrysel had a much larger role in Dead Before Dying than I, than I ever envisaged. So uh, when I had finished the book, I knew that somewhere in future I was going to have to bring Benny Chrysel back. The problem is that the consequences of, of creating him as uh, the cliché alcoholic cop meant that when I uh, started writing um, the, the book, the first book in which he was the protagonist called Devil's Peak, um, I had this problem now. I had to work with a character that was, that was an alcoholic, a typical genre fiction cop. Uh, and I tried to do something different. I tried to really focus on the damage that Benny was doing because of his alcoholism and how he was struggling to win back his wife uh, and, and to uh, beat the, uh, the alcoholic tendencies. Um, and that, I think, made him, endeared him to me even more. Because when you work with a character, and especially if you work in the genre, then you're looking for uh, as much, as many sources of suspense as you can find. And, Conflict being the mother of suspense, if you can have a character with a lot of internal conflict as well, uh, that I think adds to the depth of the character and to the uh, interest that readers may have in the story. The origins of the story I think are uh, quite interesting. Um, I started looking more and more at the huge financial transactions that were happening in South Africa at the time. They were very much in the news, um, especially black economic empowerment transactions where um, traditionally white companies were selling uh, or handing over large portions of their ownership uh, to black businessmen, which uh, is part of uh, a very important phase in South Africa, and that is to, to widen the participation in, in the South African economy. But the thing is that these huge transactions uh, also meant that a lot of people were making a lot of money. Um, the people who facilitated these transactions, international and local banks, uh, groups of lawyers, etc., etc. So this was to me very interesting, and I just happened to have a friend and a reader, Phil Winter, who knew a lot about this. He works in the financial industry, uh, and uh, Theo sent me an email with a with a menu of things that I could cherry pick uh, in terms of the really interesting parts of of these transactions. Um, so that I think was was the real origin. We're starting to look at this. It was probably some of the most difficult research that I've done because of the complexity of these transactions. But the wonderful thing is that it's the kind of people that are really fun to write about because these are very rich, high-profile people um, living in these big houses and riding uh, very fancy sports cars, which is a nice change in terms of, of the... Um, cases that Benny and Chrysal have had in the past. Uh, but that was the real origin. But I have to admit that, um, you know, I owed Benny, in the two previous books, Benny Chrysal had gone through uh, some really bad stuff in, the, in, in uh, Devil's Peak. His wife kicks him out of the house and she says if he does not sober up, then uh, she doesn't want him back. In 13 hours, she divorces him. At the end of 13 hours, Benny hears that his wife is going to leave him uh, permanently. So I also owed Benny uh, a little bit of resolution in terms of his love life. He needed someone that he can get attached to. And that became a lot of fun because uh, he had met in 13 hours a former, a very famous uh, former singer called Alexa Barnard, and they had an immediate chemistry and a connection. So in seven uh, days, Benny 
uh, starts pursuing her, he slowly falls in love with her, but it's very difficult for him because she's an alcoholic too. And that was a dynamic that I really enjoyed writing about because for the first time suddenly Benny, being uh, an alcoholic himself, uh, he became the guy who had to look after Alexa and make sure that she stays dry, which was a very new role for him. So that was also part of the uh, development of, of the story of Seven Days. Yes, I, the research was great. I, for the first time since Dead Before Dying, I spent uh, a lot of time with the South African police services. I was very fortunate in that the Hawks, the elite investigative uh, unit in Cape Town, allowed me uh, into their inner sanctum. I spent several days with them. They were just incredible. I was blown away by the dedication of, of, of these uh, policemen and women, um, by how hard they worked. Um, how they were incredibly focused uh, on what they were doing and their passion for their job. Um, it, was, it was an amazing time, it was a, an amazing experience for me. But also to understand uh, modern technology, uh, the Hawks use the very latest in uh, technology, whether it's forensics, whether it's cell phone and computer technology, they use all of this to catch the bad guys and they, they showed it all to me, which I was very, very... Uh, uh, lucky to see, but that was that was truly amazing uh, research to do, and it was a wonderful experience. I also, you know, when I whenever I do research, I go out. I take my camera, my video camera, my GPS. Uh, I go walk the streets that Benny would walk. I go find places and houses. For instance, for the uh, for the very rich guy who uh, is the power behind this big transaction, I had to go find a house in the very affluent. Uh, part of, of Cape Town called Constantia uh, and that was a lot of fun. I studied aerial photographs, I used Google Earth to do that and then I went on to websites of estate agents to try and find a house because you always find nice photographs on estate agent uh, websites to try and find a house that uh, was big in terms of the land that it occupied but also very uh, beautiful uh, to help me to uh, describe that kind of house. Um, the Hanukkah sloot, the, the woman that was murdered, uh, one of the cases that Benny has to look into, um, I had to find uh, a f an apartment for her. Uh, and again, I went looking, I, I love the Boer Carp, it's a very beautiful part of Cape Town, it's very colorful, but it's also changing, it's going through a lot of changes. So I went there and I found an apartment building that I really liked, and then went inside and, and found an apartment that would be perfect for Hanukkah. Um, and those photographs helped me to place her body and uh, to try and uh, envisage and visualize how Benny would come in, how he would see the murder scene. So I also do a lot of, of research uh, in those terms. Seven Days was, was an, an easier book to write uh, just in terms of the story because everything happens in Cape Town and uh, you know I've got to know Benny Chrysal uh, very well, uh, this is his third book that he was the protagonist in but it was diff very difficult to write under the circumstances for the uh, during that time I was doing uh, so much traveling in the year that I finished Seven Days I had two trips to America I had uh, several to Europe, to France and to Germany and I had to do a lot of writing um, while traveling um, the interesting thing to me is that it's the first time that I've finished the first draft of a manuscript away from my usual place of writing at home. I finished the first draft in a hotel room in Houston, Texas, uh, and then I sent it to my editor, Etienne Blumhoff. Um, he read it and he uh, sent me his feedback, and the final draft I finished in a hotel room in San Francisco. It was the first book that I wrote, large parts of it on planes, on trains, in airports, and in hotel rooms. So in, in those terms, it was really difficult and it was really tough. Yes, uh, Sean Bean has, has signed on. If the movies are made, he will, uh, he will be Benny Chrysal. But you have to understand that the, the movie-making process is a very slow one. What happens first is that uh, a production company options your book 
which means they have the right for 12 or 18 or 24 months to develop the movie project. But it's a very slow moving project. First of all, they have to get the script written because without a script, they can't go uh, find the cast. Or they can't attach a director. And only once they've done that, then they go look for funding. And uh, funding an international movie is a very difficult and a very complicated thing and a very slow thing to happen. So there's no guarantee at this stage that um, either seven days or 13 hours will become a movie but Sean Bean has signed up to, to be Benny Chrysal and I would be absolutely delighted if he if he did play the role uh, I admire him as an actor very much and uh, to me the interesting thing is that he looks a little bit like the way I envisaged Benny Chrysal to look so um, uh, I would be absolutely delighted Spell my heart.